everybody, I'm back for a, another video. I have a few things in front of me, and I was watching a few videos, and I saw that Ellie Katz and Sam had done a, you know, who's behind the hands sort of a video, and I wanted to take a look at that. So I took some notes, in my documented journey, cork traveler's notebook cover in one of my inserts. Here it is. Um, this is um, this is kind of what I've been using ever since I got it. So I've, it's been what two, three weeks now, and I'm actually really, really, really loving this this traveler's notebook. Um, and then, then I have some arting stuff, some journaling stuff, and stuff for YouTube. I've got, um, this right here is a, uh, where is it? It's not Traveler's Factory. It is a, um, paper and cats digital insert. It is just a dot grid, and I don't even know if you can see that. It's a very light dot grid, um, and then the pages at the bottom that says 30, that says 29 are numbered. And then at the beginning, there is two pages of an index. And I've gone through one of these already this year. Um, and I've actually used the index. It's like the first time I've ever used an index. And so I've got like notes in here. Like I wrote down the questions. And, um, and then also some of the stuff I had to write down answers because there was some complicated stuff. But this is what I have for notes. Like I watched a Lavender video and I took notes on it. Um, I've been really reading a lot um, and I started to take notes here and then I stopped. So I've got four pages for some notes in the middle. But I've been, you know, listening to The Minimalists. Um, and listening to some podcasts and have that there and some books that I want to read. Just, just general stuff like that in here. Anyways, so let's get to this. The Planner Q&A. She called it the Social Distancing Edition. Um, and it says, tell us about yourself as much or as little as you would like. Well... Um, so if this is your first time here to one of my videos, my name is John. I am trained as a classical musician. Uh, I have multiple degrees. I have a, a bachelor's in music performance, orchestral studies, uh, area concentration, and then I have three master's degrees. I have a master's from Louisiana State University in flute performance, literature, and pedagogy. So you know, a specialization of advanced teaching of flute, flute history and all of that literature. Um, and then I have two other master's degrees, but they're from Indiana University. One is in historical transverse flute performance, meaning on copies or instruments from the Renaissance, the Baroque and the classical period, and also in early music history, specifically Baroque and classical. Um, so those are my degrees. I started my doctorate, but I did not finish it. I um, went to university for 12 years after college, or I mean after high school, and 12 years was a lot. So I decided to take a break, and I was like, oh, I'll go back and finish my degree. Well, it never happened. So <laughs> there we are with that. Um, I live in... Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I am a flute professor at Tulsa University of Tulsa and Tulsa Community College. I'm their adjunct professor. It's not full-time, so it's not anywhere near full salary, not anywhere part-time salary. Um, it's Adjunct jobs are very strange. Um, yeah, I get, I get to work with a great bunch of kids, I do have to say that, that I am I'm thankful of, that I... I I can attract some really great kids to work with. Um, and then I'm also the principal flutist of the Tulsa Symphony Orchestra, which plays for Tulsa Ballet, the Tulsa Chorale. Um, we've got a chamber series, chamber orchestra series. So 
that's usually every weekend, or at least three weekends a month. I used to be the principal flutist of Tulsa Opera, but I had a lot going on with the university jobs and the symphony, and um, at that time I was a brand ambassador for Altus Flutes, and a lot of times when that stuff got scheduled, it conflicted with opera, so I, I stopped doing opera after, what, three? Three seasons? Um, and then I occasionally will go back, like we did, um, Madam Butterfly this year, I got called to do that, and also another opera, I can't remember what it was, but it got cancelled due to COVID, um, and then I think the last time I did opera a few years ago was Madame Butterfly again. I guess I get called for the Puccini. <laughs> I love Puccini, so, and, and Madame Butterfly is one of my favorite operas, so I'll gladly be first call for Madame Butterfly. Um, so I guess, you know, that is, you know, a little bit about me. Uh, it said, how did you come across the online planner community? And I, I did take um, some notes. Um, before I started using a paper planner again, I had gotten an iPad and the iPhone and my MacBook Pro, and I was in the process of doing all of that stuff online. And and I, I, I love aspects of, of, you know, digital planning. There are so many things that I love about digital planning. Um, but there was one time there was some update and everything got updated and everything I had on my computer and in the cloud because it was the first time iCloud happened so that would have been like around the time of the invention of the iPhone so like 2008 or so and everything got lost I lost everything and I was like uh, I know I've got things to do today and I know I've got places I need to go to um, so I decided to go out and get a paper planner and um, I just went out to Barnes & Noble got myself a um, what was it a Moleskine it was a, a weekly planner I don't think it had months and I just think it had a week on two pages and it was timed and it was um, vertical and I used that for a few years, actually, probably till when I got my first Traveler's Notebook. I got my first Traveler's Notebook in 2013, and it was um, passport size. It wasn't this one. It was my brown Midori that I had um, converted by, um, or Baumkuchen altered. I got that, and, and at first I just started using it as journaling along with my um, Moleskine calendar. But then I started, you know, doing some looking on YouTube about Traveler's Company, and I came across videos by Carrie Harling, um, and I, I'll see if I can link here in one of those info cards. Um, it was probably six or seven years ago, 2013, 2014. Um, and she was talking about how she had taken her standard traveler's notebook and it became an accidental field notes um, notebook <laughs> due to a dog uh, accident. I'll see if I can link that here. But then I just started watching everything that, you know, she was doing. And then I discovered, you know, it used to be like the One Book July group and on Facebook. Now it's the coffee and planner. I forget what it what they changed it to. Um, but I don't think it gets much action anymore. Um, but that was, you know, my first introduction into the um, planning community was Carrie Harling and her videos. And so I'll link that video and I'll link her channel as well. Um, so that's kind of how I got into the planning aspect. Now it says, what is your current everyday carry or carries? So for ever and ever and ever, Passport or Micro have been my everyday carries, but I have changed and this little beauty right here, a Filofax uh, Ochre Malden, do I have cash? I got a couple of bucks, who knew? Um, this is my everyday carry. I am 
loving this. I mean, everyday carry as in when I venture out of the house, since we've been in quarantine, it's, you know, it's, you know, far and few between, but this is my everyday carry. Um, and I'm actually liking using the rings. I, I think I'm liking using the rings right now because my schedule isn't as busy as, um, I mean, here we are. My schedule definitely isn't as busy as it was in previous um, months, for sure. Um, so that's my cute little everyday carry. Uh, what is your favorite type of pen? Ballpoint rollerball, da 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 da. Fountain pen, felt pen, fine liner. So I, I thought quite a lot about this and um let's see i guess you could say here i put some stuff into my 10th anniversary traveler's notebook tin i'd have to say like gel pen would be like my my favorite type of pen and i'm wondering if i have one i have this but it's not a muji oh here it is This is like the first gel pen, well not this one, but this style is the first gel pen that I got, the Muji gel pen. Um, and I got the black in the 038, and I've even gotten the black in 05. I tend to like the 038, especially if I'm writing on something small, like the lines of the Filofax grid, or even if I'm writing in a passport grid, just because it, it it makes it a little bit easier to write and easier to see. So this is, you know, like my favorite, favorite, favorite pen. I've been using this one. It came in a um, cloth and paper penspiration box. I mean, if you look at it, it looks almost exactly like the Muji. It's a little bit longer, a little bit wider, and it has a little bit more ink in it. That's the only difference. Um, so this definitely is one of my favorite pens, but I do, I do have a couple of pens in here that I like. Um, this one right here. This is my Midori Traveler's Company. It is the brass fountain pen. This is one of my favorites. Um, and I just love the way it, it antiques, and you can always use polish to clean that up. And then I also like their ballpoint pen as well, except I need to get some ink refills for that. Um, and then something that I've been excited about is this one right here. I'm not sure if you can see but it says J Airbine and it is if you can see that I doubt it it is a ballpoint pen Oop, just got ink on me I need to clean it but it's a ballpoint pen but it has yeah I'm gonna get ink all over um, ooh, you'll see right here it has let me twist that up it has a um, converter where you can actually put ink, you know, your favorite um, fountain pen ink. I'm going to have to sit this down. Of course, this would happen while I'm filming. So, it, it you know, you can fill it with your favorite fountain pen ink and um, when you post the pen, you can see it's the same size as the Muji. And I've been trying to move away from disposable pens. I think I have got like six or seven more of these Mujis along with a couple of these. And I do have um, a couple of these. It's, it's basically the same thing as a Muji gel pen, except it's got a clicker. Um, so I've been trying to stay away from the 
disposable pens and move to something a little bit more um, effective, uh, cost effective, and also environmentally friendly, where I can just use this beautiful ballpoint pen or one of my fountain pens and just refill it with ink that I that I have. Um, so, so that's my intention once I finish using up all of my uh, disposable pens. So that way, I mean, I have a I have a bottle of Noodler's, I think it's black eel ink is what it's called. And I've had it for two, three years. And I mean, I've used maybe that much from it. I mean, I will have ink for, for days. Um, but yeah, so those are some of my favorite pens. My Irvine, my Muji, and I'll leave them out. And then my Traveler's Company. Now actually I have my um, Midori one, it actually says brass, Midori made in Japan. And then the brass fountain pen says brass, Midori made in Japan. So those would be my favorite pens. Um, oh, I grabbed the pencil. <laughs> well, the pen is the same too. I really like the pencil, it's really nice too. Okay, so there's that. Um, then it says, what is my most used pen? Definitely my most used pen is the Muji, because if you watched any of my videos from back in like 2015, 2016, I was using Muji pens and I'm still using Muji pens. And these came from back then. <laughs> I bought two packs of 10. Oh, that's it. One that had the old stickers and then one that has the new stickers. And yeah, <laughs> they last a long time. Before that, I was using a Coletto. Um, I don't have one in there. Um, and I still have Coletto ink, so I want to try to use up all of that stuff so I can be more environmentally, um, you know, just thoughtful of what I'm sending into the universe. Uh, number six, what are your favorite planner accessories? Washi tape, washi color, or watercolors, stickers, stencils, etc. I would have to say one of mine, I've got three. Um, washi tape, you can see I've got some of my favorite washi tape on these um, little cards. Oh, I have some of the Kita little washi strips. Those are always fun. Um, or here on like a, like a thread. So I, I love those. I'm also a big fan of stencils. Like here's just one of them. I know I've got a couple of stencils in here. Ah, here's the one that everyone loves because of Allie Brown. So stencils, and I also love watercolors. I do a lot with watercolors, but I don't have any of those here with me. So watercolors, I guess. Um, Okay, question seven. What have been your biggest challenges when it comes to planning? I think for the longest time, for me, it was, you know, finding a size and kind of sticking to it. Part of that was, you know, due to having a company that makes inserts, you know, I wanted to try everything that I was making. So when people started requesting my design in A6 size, well, before I, you know, made it available, I wanted to try it. So I'd spend a month or so in A6 size and then release inserts. And then someone would want B6 slim, and so then I'd make B6 slim and then try that for another month or so. And then, um, <laughs> you know, so you name it, I've been it. I've used a micro, I've used pocket rings, I've used passport, I've used um, field note size, I've used A6, I've used personal standard, uh, like personal rings, I've used personal TN, I've used B6 slim, I've used B6, I've used, you know, standard, I've used A5, I've used half letter, you name it. I have tried it. I've even used letter, like full letter. Uh, <laughs> um, because someone had, had requested something like that. Um, and, and so I spent a good two years, like every month or so, in a new size. Um, and it was fun, don't get me wrong, it was fun, but it was also a little, you know, 
confusing. So towards the end of that time, I kept everything in passport as my on the go to go. And then the new size that I was trying um, to see if my inserts would work or if I even liked the designer or how I wanted to design them would, would you know, usually stay at home. So, so that I think was the hardest thing for me. And, and I've come to realize standard Midori size, passport size, and pocket. And I think the reason pocket works for me so well, I'll take this insert out, is it's almost the exact same size as a passport. And that's why I can get it to work. Um, one thing that's nice is you can pull things in and out. Um, the only thing is I haven't figured out what to do with the inserts when I'm done because of, you know, certain things for taxes and whatnot. Like with an insert, you know, if you have an insert, you just stick this with your, your, your tax papers or wherever you store that stuff. I've got to figure out what to do with all these little loose pages. So, so I think that for me was, you know, finding a size and kind of sticking with it. And, and that's why it's really, it's come down to these two, passport and standard. And also those are the, the easiest sizes to find digitals for, digital printables, or even um, actual physical inserts. I mean, because they were the first two sizes that Midori or the Traveler's Company came out with. So it's so easy to find inserts for that. Um, eight, let's see, eight. What do you do when you are in a planner funk? So when I'm in a planner funk, um, I, try to make it as simple as possible. I take away the washi, I take away the watercolors, I take away stickers, I take away all of that stuff. And I just go back to a pen. You actually, you can see it in here. And it's usually a standard size or a passport size. And I just do everything in pen. Like here's my weeks, just pen. So that way, all you're looking at is just your planning. You're not thinking about any extras. You're not thinking about that. And that's also one reason why I tend to keep my planners a little bit more on the neutral side. I mean, I do have some cute things in there. Don't get me wrong. Um, I gotta put more stickers there. Um, see, I, I keep things pretty darn neutral. Um, the only place where they aren't neutral is like in my journals, because that's my journal. You know, it's, it's my creative outlet, my verbal outlet, my all of that type of stuff. It has, that's what these are. That's the creative outlet. My planner is just for planning, so I don't need to do any of that stuff. And I also don't put any pressure on myself to do that in there. If I happen to have some time and I'm doodling, then a doodle might creep in there. But but I try to keep that separate. I try to keep all that fun, creative stuff in other places. Um, but So that's my reset. I go back to the original sizes I started in and just simplify, simplify, simplify. What do your loved ones think about or think of my planning hobby? Um, I don't think they think that that much of it. I think some people might be like, why do you need all of these covers? And I've questioned that myself as I've been going through this minimalist, minimalism, essentialism, KonMari sort of a path the last few months. Um, I've been questioning that myself too, um, but I, I haven't gotten any, you know, other than, huh, that's a lot of notebooks for keeping you together, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, it is what it is. Um, but I, yeah, I haven't gotten any, anything. 
crazy, you know, because usually they see me doing art or they see me journaling. And so they see it as something that's pro productive. Um, I'm being proactive in some ways. Um, yeah. So that's about it. Um, this is a long question, the next one. If you have taken any personality tests, what are your results? Hogwarts House, Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, etc. If not, how would you describe yourself? So I have actually done all of those. So my Hogwarts House is Hufflepuff, which I'm sure most of you would understand if you've watched any of my videos here. Um, for my uh, Myers-Briggs, I'm an INFJ, introverted, intuitive, feeling, judging. Um, and this one, they say, is a very rare one, sometimes referred to as an artist, uh, or sorry, as the advocate or the idealists. We are creative, gentle, and caring. And I definitely see that. Um... So that's me, INFJ. Um, and then for the Enneagram, that one I, I recently took. And um, my, I guess, like, my primary type is a one. And it said that it's, you know, feeling uh, most always be... Oh, like feeling like you must always be right. They're considered the model children, dutiful, responsible, and um, perfectionists. Um, at the same time, they're also idealists. Um, so it said I'm a 98% match for the perfectionist or a one. And then a couple of others like that I was really high up at was a four. I was a 92% match for individualists, and um, they want to be unique and live authentically. Uh, highly, a high attitude for emotional expression, and so that's an interesting, um, you know, combination. And then the third highest one was six, as 89% of skeptic, <laughs> and then an 87% match for the. Um, investigative or investigation so I thought that was kind of interesting so I'm I'm a one but I have strong individualist and um, skeptic <laughs> tendencies <laughs> the one I am the least is uh, is a seven yeah seven was uh, enthusiast <laughs> I'm a 54% <laughs> that's my lowest I thought it was funny Anyways, so there's that. And and I didn't buy the in-depth study. I just that's just from, you know, doing the test and getting those first little paragraphs that they, they talk about. Um <clears throat> let's see. And the last thing is at the time these questions were written, many of us were practicing social distancing in light of that. What shows or movies would you recommend? So Yes, we are still social distancing. Even though some of the state is back to functioning, really only about 75% is not still. You know, it's just a small fraction. Um, but, like, I've been re-watching a lot of those science fiction shows that I used to watch when I was in high school and college, like Earth Final Conflict and Deep Space Nine. Um, I've been listening to the podcast, uh, The Minimalists, um, and even Lavendaire. I've been listening to her podcast. Um, she has, also has a YouTube channel, Lavendaire. Um, she's got lots of interesting ideas that... I've followed her for a long time, but the last few years I haven't really watched much, so I've got a lot of stuff to to catch up on. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are. That was kind of a fun thing. I have no idea how long this video is and um, how I'm going to, to edit this, but there you are. Um, I do have an unboxing coming next week, and I do have a plan with me and a journal with me coming up. 
um, the Journal of Me will take place in here, and it is a collab with Paper Made Me Do It, so I'm so looking forward to that. We did a little exchange of things. She sent me some stuff, and I sent her some stuff, and we're going to do a fun spread, and I think I might get to that next. Okay, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, and I will link Sam's video and Ellie Cat's video. I think it was Ellie Cat, because um, they were the first two that started this thing, and I'll leave the questions down below if you want to, um, you know, jump on in and share some answers with everyone. Okay, so like I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.